Brett Okamoto with ESPN alongside UFC Bantamweight Aljamain Sterling, who takes on Jimmy Rivera this weekend, UFC Fight Night in Phoenix. And Aljamain, uh, is, has this fight taken on any type of, of personal feeling? Because I feel like as it's gotten closer, you've had more of like a sort of a personal nature to some of the things you've been saying about it. Nah, you know what? I, I just didn't like the way he tried to downplay uh, what happened in the past. You know, he's talked a ton of shit. And now, I mean, it's been going back and forth for like five, six years. So now it's kind of to the point where we don't even really have to say anything. But don't sit here and try to pretend like you weren't talking all this shit about my stand-up and saying I'm overrated and this, that, and the third. I, It is what it is. We're going to fight. I knew one day I passed with Cross. I knew he was a high-level fighter. I know I'm a high-level fighter. And it was just a matter of time. So here it is, a couple of days away, man. I'm excited about it. At this point, all that other stuff doesn't matter to me. It's just more about just the ultimate goal fighting for the UFC world title. I know he's thinking the same thing on his mind, and the next guy, the guy who wins this fight is going to be, I think, back in that title conversation for yeah. sure. And that's the focus, right, is, is where this put, this fight puts you in the rankings. But where did this all start? What was the origin of, of the dispute between you and Jimmy? Uh, it was like a little jealousy of like a boyfriend-girlfriend thing. You know, I was dating the UFC, and I was the next guy in line to get signed. He had a shot on Ultimate Fighter. He lost in, to get into the house. And I was the next guy. We were one and two, respectively. And I guess he thought if he knocked me out, he would get the, the, the shot before me to get the call up. And I didn't take the fight. I took the fight with somebody else. I was just coming off a of shoulder, uh, shoulder surgery, labrum. I was, gone for, I was out for like 10 or 11 months. And I wasn't going to fight the guy who was ranked number two in the, in the world. And that's just being completely honest. It was a, it was a high-risk fight, high-risk, low reward for what? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the, what does that do in terms of me moving forward? So I took my shot and I said listen we're gonna fight we're both tough fighters why not fight for the big money why are we fighting for a regional pay mm -hmm. and that's the way that's the way I think I, I'm a thinking man I think about this sport from a, a bunch of different angles and strategically not just let's just fight the fight that's, that's stupid it's got to be something else behind it something that's worth giving the fans or something that's worth fighting for yeah. so obviously this is a fight that you thought would happen down the line it is happening now why? What, what makes Jimmy River? What, what did you see in him that made that told you this guy's going to be around a while and he's going to be somebody that I meet at the top? Well, his, his, his fundamentals are, are very, very sound. He's a tough, well-disciplined fighter. His combinations are, are really on point, and he's well-rounded. He could do it all, you know. Um, I had a feeling just as tough as he's been, he's been clipped in fights, and he's come back, bounced back. And, you know, he's not easy to just put away. Uh, he's there to fight the entire 15 minutes or less. So I knew that that's a, that's a main ingredient that you need as a fighter to stick around. To It's one thing to just have skill. It's another thing to have a little bit of heart. He has, a, he has some heart, you know, so I'll give him, tip my hat to that. But um, he's never fought no one like me. This is a huge difference in terms of the style of fight that I'm bringing. And I know he saw his, his teammate, Lyman Good. You know, I don't like talking about bad about other fighters, but that's his teammate. He fought a, a, a guy who's looking to do the same thing that I was looking to do, take him down and get on his back. And he got choked down in the first round. Honestly, it's no secret what I'm trying to do. And I heard him say they pretty much had the same game plan. And honestly, I'm, it's hard to get off when you're striking when a guy is constantly attacking your legs. And once you start worrying about the takedown, wrestling takes the fight, and then it's going to open up my striking. And eventually, I'm going to get him down to the mat where I want him to be. Last question on the fight, Aljamain. The last few times you've been out in the octagon, I've said it just looks different. It just feels different. Like you've turned some type of corner and that your game has come together in a way that maybe it wasn't years ago. And I have a hard time even putting words to it. What is it? What is it about your last few performances do you think that has made you potentially a different fighter in that Bantamweight division? I think it's, it's honestly just the confidence and the focus. Um, before, I was a little more timid to, to pull the trigger and do some of the things I've been doing in the training room. I know we talk about this a lot. My coaches, they, you know, they big me up all the time about it. And people always get a little let down because I don't do the things that they talk about. And after I lost to Marlon, it was kind of like, well, fuck it. That was the worst that could ever happen, you know, being knocked out. That was my biggest fear. Now I know I can take a shot. That one, I ran into that. But outside of that, I've been hit with the small gloves before. I know I could take a shot. I fought Brett Johns. I fought a good, good boxers. I've, you know, Cody Stamey. I fought all these tough guys. I've, I've been around the block, Rafael Sunsell. I fought the who's who's of this division at this point. So I know where I belong. I know my skill set. Now I, now I know what I'm truly capable of. And those last two fights, I think it's just, I'm just going to constantly keep getting better. Do you, do you feel comfortable with the way the division is shaking out? TJ wants a rematch with Cejudo. Marlon's up there. I think he probably deserves a title shot. Where, where, do, you, where do you find yourself in all of this? 
if Marlon doesn't get the next title shot, I've lost all hope for the rest of this division. It's, um, it's honestly crazy. Just everything that's been going on lately, the interim title shots that don't mean jack shit, the guys that just cut, cut the line, they automatically get a title shot. It's like I could just sit here and just talk a whole lot of shit and I could be granted a title shot just based off the merit of that and just win one fight maybe. Now, is that what I want to do? Is the ultimate goal is to fight for the title, but I want to feel like I've earned it. I want to earn my right there. I don't want to just be gifted something and get to my title shot and get my ass kicked. There's, there's nothing worse than that, I think, when you get your one opportunity because these title shots don't come around very often, you know? So we've seen it with so many different fighters time and time again. I want to make sure when, I'm, when I get my opportunity, I'm ready. And I think Marlon should get the next shot. After that, I think the winner of this fight is going to really solidify who's the next guy. Especially if TJ were to beat Marlon, I don't think you could give the... If Cody beats Pedro Munoz, you can't give the, the title shot back to Cody. So I like my chances right now. You know, I just got to make sure I go out there, have a great performance, and let everything fall into place after that. If it turned into a round-robin situation between Henry Cejudo, Marlon Marais, and TJ Dillashaw, who do you like out of those three to emerge with the belt? Marlon Marais, TJ Dillashaw, or Henry Cejudo? Ah. You know, honestly, I really do think TJ just got clipped. I think he got caught, and I think he could have fought a little longer in that fight. Um, I'm going to have to lean towards TJ. In terms of the overall package that he brings to the table, the uh, the grappling, the striking, the footwork, um, at 35, he's been a beast. You know, the one hiccup he has when he's gone down for the very first time to 125, got clipped behind the ear. I know what that feels like. Marlon clipped me behind the ear. You're not hurt, but you lose your equilibrium. Yeah. It's hard for you to stand up because you're like ro walking on roller skates, but you're, you're conscious, you're still there. It's just one of those weird shots. And I'm not saying the fight would have gone any different because Sayudo's on your back. He's throwing crazy punches. But I think the fight should have gone a little bit longer. But I, to answer your question, I, I would lean towards those show for sure.